Hey everybody, uh, I'm Jesse, and I want to talk to you today about how my depression went away completely. And I've done a lot of stuff uh, over the years, and I'm going to go through the things that I did that may have worked, um, probably some of the things I did that definitely did not work, uh, or even made it worse. And this video is going to be a little different. I'm going to start out just by telling my story. And hopefully something in my story is helpful. Uh, and then I'm going to get into exactly what I did and, and what it was like coming from being at one of the worst points in my life to one of the best points in my life, pretty much within the span of a few weeks. So I've been depressed, uh, sometimes very, very depressed, sometimes not so much, but for a little over 10 years. And it got so bad at some points that I didn't even want to be alive. I never attempted to take my own life. Um, I had thoughts, but I never made a plan or acted on those thoughts. For me, that wasn't an option. I had my kids, I had my family. I can't, I got to be there for them. Uh, it wasn't an option. Also for me, the thought was in my mind, well, if I die, I might end up in a worse situation than I do now. I am now, um, you know, so death wasn't an exit. It was something I wanted, but only because I just felt like I couldn't take life anymore. Not because I thought it would actually help anything. So I've gone through a ton of treatments. I've done some videos before on the other treatments I've been through, different antidepressants, different counselors, uh, different types of therapy. Uh, even some more experimental treatments like um, uh, ketamine treatment. So I've tried a lot. Nothing completely cured me of the depression. It was always there. Some stuff worked a little bit to improve my mood. Uh, but nothing completely cured it. So leading up to the point where my depression went away, which at this point was about two and a half weeks ago, I did change some things. I don't know if any of these things are what worked. Maybe they all contributed. Maybe they didn't help at all. But I'm going to let you know, I'm, I'm just trying not to censor anything. I'm just going to give you a ton of information. And you all can maybe try it, maybe not. But I'm hoping that something helps somebody out there or gives somebody a little bit of hope. So leading up to the, the point where my depression was gone, I changed my diet. So a few months before I changed my diet, I, I started going on, I don't know, it's, it's not paleo, it's not carnivore, it's it's kind of my own thing. Basically, just to keep it simple, I cut out all like vegetable oil, seed oil, uh, like canola oil, stuff like that. Um, I cut out all processed sugars, all added sugars. So fruit's okay, but putting a spoonful of sugar, you know, in my coffee, not okay. And I actually cut back on a lot of vegetables. Like I still eat potatoes, like root vegetables, things like that. Uh, but a lot of the leafy greens. Now, I, I don't know if this is going to be long term good or not. But from the research I've done, that's the decision I came to right now. So I won't completely avoid them. I have them in moderation. But I'm not trying to sit down and eat a giant bowl of salad. Right. Um, I started doing yoga and breath work. So particularly hot yoga seemed to help the heat plus the exercise combined just kind of focuses your mind completely like you can't think about anything else because it's so intense. Uh, so that helped. And then the breath work is like um, you do a bunch of breathing exercises to help your mind get into a meditative state. And after the breathing exercises, you, you feel almost in a dream state. Uh, where that feeling where you're half awake and half asleep and you're kind of still a little bit dreaming, you know, in your mind, that's kind of the closest way I could describe it. Okay, so sometimes I would have like a powerful experience and I would be crying and, and sometimes I would honestly just fall asleep and they'd have to wake me up at the end of class. Okay, but just another thing that I did that may have helped. Okay, Now here's some stuff that I did that probably hurt. <laughs> I stopped eating for most of the day. Um, I actually dropped 60 pounds over the last, 
I don't know, six months or so. Um, so probably from around um, like the end of last year, I was 140, 243 pounds. Now I'm down to 180. Okay. Most of that, that's the weight loss was probably good for me. I feel better physically, but the way I did it was not great. I just would wake up, wouldn't eat anything. I would go as long as I could all day without eating. And then I would just eat just enough to fill me up. Uh, I, I don't know why I got into that. I don't know if it was anxiety or what, but that's, I just kind of got into that and stuck with it for way too long. I also stopped exercising. Okay. So I had gotten into the yoga, but then over the last you know month or two, I quit and I quit any type of exercise. So it's basically no exercise at all. My hygiene was suffering. I quit shaving, only showered like, you know, twice a week and I didn't want to go anywhere. Uh, that led to a situation where about about a month ago, I had some some traumatic events happen to me. I'm not going to go into details just to protect people's privacy, but I had two major traumatic events that happened within like three days of each other. And um, that set me off on panic attacks. So I had panic attacks uh, for two weeks. I had panic attacks daily. I couldn't function. I couldn't uh, I couldn't get out of bed some days. I, I used up all my sick time at work and I had to take some vacation days uh, as well. I, I did see a psychiatrist during that time because I, I just couldn't do it. So I, I, I did the, uh, like a video call with a psychiatrist, got me on some anti-anxiety medication. To be honest, I, I, one of them is like a long-term thing that's supposed to take a few weeks to kick in. So in reality, that, that medicine probably isn't even kicked in until the last few days would be the earliest. So I don't think that helped. Um, but I got another medication that is more immediate effect, but it makes you super tired. So if I wanted to take a full dose, I was out of commission. Uh, so I started taking very tiny doses uh, to try to help with the panic. Uh, then I started to do the things that I should have been doing all along. I started doing yoga at my house in the morning. So instead of worrying about all the stress of going into a studio, I just do it like 15 minutes in the morning. I started doing push-ups and pull-ups throughout the day. Just sets of you know whatever i feel like doing and i just keep it going throughout the day i started showering and shaving almost every day uh occasionally depending on what i'm going to do like if i'm going to do a lot of outside kind of dirty work i won't shower before that you know <laughs> I'll, I'll wait I'll, I'll do that uh, but pretty much in the mornings i try to after my workouts get get a shower and shave it, it makes me feel I noticed when I the depression was worse, I would grow my beard long. I would wear sunglasses. I would try to hide from people. So even if I had to go outside, I was hiding my face from people. Okay. Um, that's just something I do when I when I feel depressed. Like I don't want people to see me. Okay. Uh, I got a haircut. I need another one now. I'm gonna go later today, but I'm gonna try to keep my hair in good shape. Right. So trying to just outwardly. I keep up the appearance that I'm that I'm doing well, right? Even if I'm not feeling well, I'm going to keep going through the motions. Okay? Uh, I started praying a lot. Okay? So I happen to be Catholic. So I was doing stuff like the rosary, which is kind of a meditative repetition of the same words. Uh, and you meditate on certain things, uh, especially in the morning and the night. Mornings and nights were always hard for me. Mornings, I never wanted to get out of bed. Nighttime, I always ruminated on, on past failures and uh, worried about the future. So those two times are a perfect time for me to get in some prayer and meditation, focus my mind on something, and make sure that those other thoughts can't creep in because my mind is occupied. When the mind is not occupied with anything, that's when the thoughts can creep in unchecked. Okay? I started reaching out to people that I know that love me people that I've known for a long time, people that I've ignored for a long time, 
you know, because of the depression. So I started reaching out. I realized there are people that care about me a lot and have a lot of great advice for me. I got some some key advice from a few people uh, that really saved me, really got me through. Um, these are not professional psychiatrists. Or these are just people that I know I can trust that have been there for me. Maybe I haven't really had a good talk with them for years, but I know there was a time in my life when when they cared about me. So that's the people I went to. I went back to counseling as well as a psychiatrist. I found a new counselor. The new counselor taught me some new techniques for visualizing things to manage past trauma and calm myself down. So I've been doing that. I'm not going to describe it to you because I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a counselor. I doubt I could do it properly. I will tell you, if you ask your psychiatrist about maybe some visualization that has to do with picture frames and paint and stuff, they might know, but that's the one I used. Um, you end up imagining yourself in a room of pictures and frames that you have created in your mind. Uh, and then the color of the picture frame, the paint, you visualize it dripping down on you, uh, covering you inside and out and draining out. Okay. When I first heard it, I was very skeptical, but my counselor said, if you practice this technique, you'll never have another panic attack. I have not since I started doing that technique. So I think it's pretty powerful. So maybe ask your therapist about it. He did tell me it's this was a technique used for victims, uh, survivors of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Uh, that's some pretty powerful trauma. If it worked for them, then, and it worked for me, maybe it could work for you. Uh, after the panic attack stopped, so it was two weeks of panic attacks, and then three days of rage. I was enraged more than I've ever been in my life. Um, I didn't want to be violent with people, but it was a weird feeling where at one point I was so angry and I, I didn't want to yell at my family that I just, I left. And uh, I, I didn't know how long I would have to be gone, but I said, I, I can't be around my family like this because I'm afraid I'm gonna yell at them. Uh, so I drove around. I went to a church, prayed for a while. I called some people that I knew. Uh, I had a really good talk with, with someone and uh, calmed me down. And when I got back, I, I felt a lot better. And so the rage did subside, but for three days, I channeled that rage into cleaning, building, workouts, fixing things around the house. Anything I could think of to do, especially physically, I installed a dishwasher, I cleaned toilets, and I'm talking clean toilets, like scrubbed the inside, outside of the toilets, right? This is like rage cleaning, all right? Uh, I'm sweaty. I'm getting, I had this fitness tracker. It was one of the, the highest levels of fitness I achieved in a single day before, and I did not do a single workout. It was just all the rage and the stress and just being super active and cleaning managed to, to give me a, an actually a good workout. I don't recommend it, but um, after three days, the rage went away though. I don't know why it went away, but it went away. And after that, there was maybe a day or two where I didn't quite realize what was happening to me. And then I finally realized the depression is gone. Um, and my mindset about the depression was entirely different before the depression was a part of me. It was who I was. Now the depression is a separate thing, like a parasite or a demon or something holding me captive. So when I, I think about the, looking back to the depressed me, it was like I was chained up inside my body and the depressed me had taken control. The, the depression. Let's not even call it the depressed me because it has nothing to do with me. Right? In my mind, the depression had taken control. It was like I was wearing a visor that was all dirty. So no matter what beauty was out there to be seen, I could not see it. Other people could describe it to me, but I could not experience it myself. 
and it was like I had a filter coming out that everything took a negative turn. So input and output both being put through this negative filter. Um, the depression made me think things about myself that were not true, but I believe them to be true. I believe that no one really wanted to hang out with me, even my closest loved ones. I believe that they were all secretly disgusted by me. I believe that my appearance was disgusting to people, that my body was terrible, that my face was ugly. Uh, ev everything about me, that my personality, that I was a downer, that I was just a drag on everybody. Uh, some of that might have been true with the depression. Maybe I was a bummer, okay? But I didn't realize how wrong that was until I was free from the depression and could see things clearly. So some of the reasons I realized the depression was gone. Okay, number one, when I went to a counselor the, the first time, uh, when I was having the panic attacks, I've had to fill out a questionnaire sheet that was uh, basically diagnosing how bad your depression is. The lower the score, the better. The, f the first time I took it, I scored a 53, which is pretty bad. One week later, I took the same test and I scored a three. Now, I've taken this test in the past as well. I've never scored that low. A three is very good. A three is like no depression, right? Uh, that was pretty amazing. I mean, that was like something tangible I could prove to. But there were a lot of other little things. It was easier to get out of bed in the morning. I just, I felt lighter. Like I could, I could jump. I could do push-ups. I could do pull-ups. I could, it was like a big weight. Like I'd been wearing a weighted vest and now it was gone. Things that used to upset me don't bother me anymore. There were things that maybe, maybe certain things my wife would do or say that used to bother me so much to the point where I'd be out of shape all, all day. I'd be bent out of shape about it. I'd be worried about it. Now it doesn't bother me at all. There were, there were situations and worries that I had that I used to go over and over again in my mind that don't upset me even more. Even if I think about it, it doesn't upset me anymore. I've been doing better at work. For a while, I, I changed jobs a few times because I kept thinking that maybe the job was the problem. You know, really, it was, it, I was the problem. My depression was the problem. Uh, so my, my just being able to accomplish tasks at work without feeling exhausted, you know, that was a huge difference for me. I started to be interested in things that I used to be interested in, like when I was 20. I'm 36 now. Things I did when I was 20... I'm, I, I'm interested in music I listened to as a teenager. I listen to now and I love it. Okay? It's, it's, it's odd. All the things that the depression took from me, I'm getting back. Now, what I can't get back is all the time loss. The time loss with my family, with my wife, with my friends. Um, I can't get that back. But that doesn't bother me. I got time to make it up. I'm only 36. And the depression is gone. I can do anything at this point. Uh, so n with depression, I would have ruminated on that loss of time. And it would have led to even worse depression. Uh, I also sleep a lot less now. I mean, I still get my seven or eight hours, usually more like seven. So basically between six to eight hours of sleep every night is my range. With depression, I could sleep for a lot longer. I could take naps and I was still tired. Now I sleep, you know, maybe if I only get six hours, maybe I'll take a short nap, like a one hour nap in the middle of the day. And I get up and I feel great. I'm eating now. At first I had to force myself to eat, but, and I literally, like, I, I felt like I couldn't even get a bite down. Like my throat was closed up. I couldn't get it down. This is when the panic attacks were happening. Now I make sure I eat. I wake up every morning and I get after my workout, I make my kids breakfast. I make them bacon and eggs and I make enough so that there's going to be a little left over. And then when they leave for school, I eat the rest of what's left over. And then I keep eating throughout the day regularly. I don't let myself get super hungry and I don't let myself get very, very full okay? because either one of those states can lead to decreased energy 
and that's not where I want to be. My workouts now energize me instead of draining me. Before, when you're depressed, if you are depressed, I know you all have heard this before. People say, well, why don't you just try working out? Try going outside. Try being active. Well, when you're afraid to go outside because you think that you're such a terrible person that no one wants to be around you, that's a hard thing. When you feel super tired and you work out with depression, you may not feel better. You may feel exhausted. That's how it felt for me. I felt like, wow, I don't think I can do anything else today because I've used all my energy. Now, if I feel tired throughout the day, instead of immediately saying I need to go lay down and take a nap, I'll say, okay, I'm going to do 20 push-ups right now. I do 20 push-ups, I feel better. Okay? Total difference. That would have never happened when I was depressed. I probably would have got down on the floor to do push-ups, maybe done a few, and maybe laid on the floor for 20 minutes. Total difference. I have a desire to be around people now. Family, friends, just random people. I talk to cashiers now when I'm at the store. Um, just peep other people in the store. I'm just talking to everybody. Right? Just telling them, have a great day. Before, when I was depressed, it was like I hid from people. I, I hoped nobody would say anything to me. And at the same time, I used the fact that they didn't say anything to me as justification that I really am a terrible person. No one really wants to talk to me. It was like this cycle that just kept getting worse. Okay. The other thing that's really awesome and unexpected is I'm getting a ton of new ideas. Like ideas about everything. Ideas about things to do with my kids, with my wife. Um, ideas for videos to make. Ideas for podcasts. Ideas for books, short stories, blogs. Uh, ideas for inventions. I sketched out an idea I had for an invention yesterday morning, right? I haven't done that since I was a kid. I'll probably never do anything with it. But the fact is, I'm having ideas and I'm getting them out. I'm either putting them in a notes app or I'm, I'm writing them out, drawing them out. And that creative process is something that I, I didn't have when I was depressed. It was difficult. The ideas didn't come to me. Now my ideas are coming to me. My memory is better. When I was depressed, I would forget things. I've always had a great memory, but the depression made me forget things. Now I find myself remembering even small details of things. Um, things I've done at work. Things in the past that I'd kind of forgotten about. Song lyrics. Uh, songs I haven't heard in years. Just uh, movie, movie quotes. It's like my mind is just full of information now. It's just springing up from my memory. Uh, from my imagination. It's it's amazing. It's, it's completely amazing. Um, for me, I'm, I'm going to try to wrap this up now. These are the, kind of my basic points. So if you stuck with me this long, thank you. I hope this is helpful. But let me, let me wrap this up with just a few thoughts I have um, and some hope. The first thought is, I made it through. I walked through hell. I came out the other side stronger. I, th I didn't think I was going to make it. I had given up. I'd given up. Like I said, I wasn't going to take my life, but if my life was taken from me, I would be fine with it. That's the point I was at. I had given up on my marriage. You can imagine with me being so depressed, it was affecting my marriage in a negative way. And it definitely was. And I had given up. I said, forget it. You know, this is just the way it is. It's going to be like this till I die. Right? So I, I'd, I'd given up on trying to improve. I'd given up on trying to improve my work. You know? I, I thought, you know what, I'm not really interested in my work. Um, uh, there's a lot of friction uh, in my team. And I thought, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to do what I, just the bare minimum to get by. Okay. Um, because I thought I can't handle anything else. I don't have the energy. I, and I believe I don't have the ability or the knowledge, you know, that, that those lies of the depression were getting to me saying, you can't handle this. You're not good enough to do this job. Now, totally different. Now, I'm thinking I could do anything. I could be amazing at my current job. I could get a new job. I could do whatever. Whatever I want to do, I'm going to be great at it. And that, those are the thoughts that are coming in my mind now. Instead of the thought of always no. Always, you, if you happen to get an idea, you immediately figure out why it's a terrible idea. And you never share it. And that was what I was 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 at and what i've come to is 
uh, just amazing positivity. Uh, not irrational, but just realistically, there are a lot of things I can do. Maybe I won't be super successful, but that's not really the point, right? That's like the point of this video. If only one person watches this video and it helps them get out of depression, then this video was worth it. If no one watches this video, it's still worth it because I'm, I'm creating, I'm getting something out. There's value in that. So I think I'm going to try to start getting in touch with my creative side a little bit. Um, I want to, I want to go out more, you know, I want, I want to go out and experience life with my wife, with my children. And I think for all of you out there that are still in the depression, this is going to seem like a fantasy. I know if I heard somebody talking like this, even a few weeks ago, I would not have believed that it was possible for me. But here's the thing with depression, for me at least, that I've learned through this whole experience. There is hope. You could go from your worst to your best in one week. It happened to me. Like I said, I don't know exactly what part of what I did helped. But all I know is the stuff that I think helped, I'm going to keep doing day in, day out. I'm going to fight harder than I've ever fought and longer than I've ever fought before to make sure depression never returns to me. And now that the depression is gone, I'm confident I can do that. I have the ability, I have the energy to do it. So if you are depressed, if you no longer want to live, and most especially if you're actually planning to die, hold on a little longer. Outlast the depression. You can outlast the depression. The depression is not who you are. It wasn't who I was. I thought it was, but that was not me. You have some, someone inside of you, the real you, that just is waiting to be released. You got to hold on a little bit longer for yourself so that you can be free. Don't give up. If you got to sleep all day, do it. Just do it. Sleeping all day is better than giving up. By giving up, I mean dying. That's the ultimate act of giving up. Hold on for longer. Keep out some hope. Keep out some hope that a miracle could happen. Because in my life, that's basically what it feels like. Keep out hope that some new treatment will come out. You know, keep up hope that, it, you know, anything could happen to you. I know you're depressed. And when you think anything could happen, immediately you think about bad things. I did the same thing. But keep it in your mind that you can outlast the depression. One day the depression could be gone. And one day you could feel better than you've ever felt before. And you can repair all those relationships. And the people that you love that love you will be there. And they will rejoice with you. They will be excited and happy for you. And then you can start living your life. Like I said, I'm 36. I'm going to be 37 next month. And to, when I was depressed, it seemed like my life was nearly over. Now, I feel like my life has just started. This is the beginning of my new life. I think... I've had grandparents who live in their 90s. What if I live in my 90s? I've only lived, a, you know, a third, a little over a third of my life, right? But it doesn't matter. If I die tomorrow, it doesn't matter because I still had time to live my life. I was in control. So what I'm focusing on now, and I don't know if depressed me could ever accomplish this or not, but it's worth a shot if you're depressed. The way I figure... For the last 10 or so years, my true self, my will, was controlled by my brain and my body. But it should be the other way around. My will, my ability to choose, needs to control my brain and my emotions and my body. My plan is to research and practice and train my will to have power and subdue what my mind and body are telling me. So far, 
I've been doing a few things that I think help me. Um, at the end of my shower, I turn it all the way on cold and I force myself to stand under it. And the whole time I trash talk my body and my brain, not in a derogatory way, but in a way to say, you are not in charge of me. I run this. I do. The body does not tell me what to do. The brain does not tell me what to do. The emotions don't tell me what to do. I am in control of them. My body doesn't want to get in that cold water. I make it. The brain, the emotions do not want to get in there. I make it. And I tell them to be quiet. Because I'm in charge. And the more they rebel, the more I will try to subdue them. A few other things I'm doing. I sit down to eat dinner. I got everything ready. I'm hungry. I'm about to eat. And I wait. For a couple minutes, I look at my food and I wait. Because everything in my body and my mind is telling me to eat that food. But I'm in charge. My will is in charge. Doing something you don't like to do for 10 minutes. That's another thing. Think about what you hate to do. Do it for 10 minutes. Set a timer if you have to. Force yourself. That's my plan. That's what I'm doing. And I'm going to research and I'm going to find out more. There's got to be people in this world who have trained their willpower to the point where they can overcome any pain. They can overcome any emotion. They can overcome any negative thoughts. I believe it's possible. And if it's not, oh well. I will have trained my willpower to a, a point where it's far beyond what it is now. Maybe it's not perfect. But that's how I'm fighting to keep the depression away. So that if it ever comes back, my will will be so strong, I will crush it. That's my plan. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I have no formal training. I'm just a guy who has been depressed to the point of wanting to die many times. And I finally escaped. I don't know if I did it. I don't know if someone, I don't know if God did it. I don't know if the doctors did it, the medicine. I don't know. But I escaped. And I'm, I'm going to stay free. I'm never going back to that prison of depression. And I want to help as many other people escape as I can. I don't know what that's going to take. Probably I'm going to have to learn a lot. And I'm going to have to be doing stuff like this. Just being real and telling my story. So, if anything in this video helped you, or if you have any questions at all, no matter how weird, let me know. The only questions I will refuse to answer are questions where I, I may say something negative about somebody else, and I'd like to protect their privacy. So, other than that, I will share anything. I'll talk about anything. Now, I may not be, get to your question immediately. I still got my kids and my work and everything to do. But... I'm going to try. Maybe I'll turn your question into another video. I don't know. Whatever I think will be the most helpful. But I genuinely want to use what has happened in my life, the hell I went through, the hell I survived, to help other people so that it's not wasted. It made me strong. It almost broke me, but it didn't. And it made me stronger. I want the same for every single one of you out there dealing with depression. I want you to overcome it, come out stronger, and help pull everybody out. That's my goal. It's not my only goal in life. My kids, my wife, number one priority. Well, I'm a religious guy. My God is my number one priority. And then my wife and then my kids. But... Helping out other people that had it like me or even worse. That's right up there. That's right up there. So please help me in this. I don't know what I'm doing, but I just want to do something to help. I can't hold it in. I got to share this. So let me know what helped. Let me know what didn't help, what I can improve. Let me know what questions you have. And let me know you're interested you know, if a lot of people are interested and, and want me to keep doing stuff like this, it's going to make it way easier for me to do it. Um, this video could probably be 12 hours long if I if I just went, if I was talking, but I'm going to cut this short. Um, and I just, 
I really hope this helps somebody. So I'm going to end on, on this hope. If you're all out of hope, get a little bit in you. There's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. You just have to stay in the fight, not give up. Please don't give up. If you're thinking about it, call a hotline, call the number, call somebody, call your best friend, call someone you love. Go talk to a random person in the street. Do something. Reach out to somebody. It doesn't matter if they think that you've lost your mind. Find somebody. Hold on to somebody. Find something worth living for. For me, it was my kids. My kids kept me alive. Find something. Do something. I know it's hard. I know telling a depressed person to do something is super hard. Like, they just may immediately think they can't. But do something. Find someone who depends on you that you need to live for. And if nobody depends on you now, start having somebody depend on you. Find a homeless person that you bring food to every day. Just do it. Ad adopt a kid in another country. You know how they have those programs where you, you send money and they write you a letter back? Do something like that. Hold, find something. Get a pet. Get a goldfish. Something that needs you. And hold on to that. I, don't, I mean, if you don't want to have a goldfish, get a plant. Get a plant that'll die if you don't water it. I'm telling you, get something in your life that needs you and hold on to that with everything you have. Because if you can't stay alive for love of yourself, you might be able to stay alive for love of something else. So I said a lot. I hope it made sense. I love you all. Even if no one else does, even if you think no one else does, I love you. I haven't met you, but I know your struggle. I have a bond. We have a bond. I love you for that. Stay alive. Keep fighting. And if I can do anything to help, let me know. I'm Jesse. I'm no longer depressed. And I hope you have a great day.